All right, guys, we're back again on the G6 Jeep. Now, this one is all about the electronics that I chose for this truck. When I was fabricating the truck, I knew that I would need to mount the electronics, obviously, but this is something that sometimes you can overlook uh, when you're building a truck from scratch or, uh, you know, highly modifying like something like this. So I had made areas in the chassis to uh, create and mount electronics panels and different panels for different mounting, things like that. So right now I've got one on each side of the truck and then one in the rear. As you can see, I've already got my electronics mounted. Uh, these panels made it very easy. And then what I also did is I utilized these panels with some uh, one inch angle aluminum to that's what it's going to be uh, used as my body mount. I'll probably use some uh, hook and loop on each side and the, the body will just stick on from each side there. That way I don't have to worry about body posts. I don't like the look of body posts and I hate the look of body pins. So uh, I can get away with that and not have to worry about that any longer. I'll be controlling it all via my Fataba 4PK SR. So uh, I use the 614FF-E. This is the antenna-less receiver that's for electric cars only, they show. Um, I have great luck with that receiver. I get more range than I ever need. Now for steering, I've got the uh, BLS 157HV. Now that is a lot of servo for a 1.9, but I do like the speed and power that it has, so I pretty much use it in everything I can. It's uh, 520 ounce inches of power, it's 7.2 volts, I believe, which is, uh, like I said, it's a lot for a 1.9, but I like to, like when I turn the wheel, I like the wheels to turn. So I always go with uh, high volt servos and the, uh, as much power as I can get in a standard size case, which that servo really fits the bill. Uh, that servo is actually discontinued now, and now they have the 177 HV, I believe, but it's pretty much a replacement for that same servo, except it adds S bus. In here, I've got a Mamba Max Pro from Castle. I pretty much use this ESC whenever I'm using something brushless. If I'm going brushed, I'll use a Holmes ESC, like a BRXL or a BRXL Mini. But whenever I'm going brushless, I pretty much stay with that uh, Castle Mamba Max Pro. After I was uh, checking clearances and things like this for where the Mamba Max Pro is sitting with the body, I noticed something. On the, uh, the G6 body, there's this little center console area between the two seats. Well, I noticed that when I installed the body and had it in its final position, that that area was directly over my Mamba Max Pro. So as you can see, I've cut out the top of that center console and then I'll apply some mesh to the bottom side of that after I paint the body. But what that does is that gives me a direct inflow of air to that ESC since it's got the fan on top of it. it is a Castle 10 amp BEC. You always have to run a BEC. If you're not running a BEC, don't give anybody else advice. So. Anyway, uh, Castle BEC pushing everything. I have the, cap, the BEC wired to the receiver and then uh, the red wire from the ESC pulled out of that. These receivers can handle all the amperage that this thing puts out, so no worries about trying to bypass that. Uh, for the motor, now there's no motor in there right now. Uh, the reason for that is that I'll be running the Tekken Rock 412, which I have right here, but it's disassembled right now. The reason is, is I'm replacing the bearings that were on uh, both ends of it. They were, uh, they need to replace pretty bad. So I'm gonna put in an order with Fast Eddie's bearings and have some new bearings delivered for this thing. And then once those are here, it'll get thrown in. All right, for the battery, I'm running the Turnigy 2200 3S packs. These are the 40 to 50C versions, high discharge. Uh, they run very well with those Tekken motors. Now, when ordering Turnigy batteries, don't order the Nanotex. I've got a bunch of these here, and all of them do not stand up anywhere near as well as the little bit more expensive, uh, the blue version. I don't know, the, the power systems, I don't know if they have a brand or a series for these, but get the a little bit more expensive Turnigy's. I've got a bunch of these laying around because like they were on sale or they were cheap or something like that at the time. And uh, I've got, I think I've got six or eight of them and I think two of them are good enough that I'll actually run them. Uh, the other ones were just, you know, here and there. I ordered two or three separate times for those. I think I ordered three the first time and two a couple other times after that. 
but I didn't hardly get four months, three, four months out of them before they just started to, to fall off and lose cells and uh, lose the ability to, to stay balanced across. So I've got a bunch of these and these things are always great. I, I haven't had one of these go bad on me. That wasn't my own fault. One other thing I did after locating the electronics everywhere is that I went in and I shortened all my leads to make sure that I didn't have any excess coming into the receiver and causing like a big rat's nest. To do that, I cut off the pigtails, whatever was, you can see, you can see how long that servo was. Futabo puts long servo extensions on their, uh, their servos just because they're typically used in planes. But uh, the ESC and BEC each cut a couple of inches off as well. After that, I just used, uh, this is a little set of like, they're, they're for the kind of servo extension stuff. But you can get these little kits at your local hobby shop and it's got new servo ends and then the little gold pieces that go onto the ends of the wires. And it takes a little bit of practice to get good at it, but after you do that, it's really easy to shorten up your wires. So beyond that, that's what we got for the system in this thing. I should mention that this uh, Mamba Max Pro is already waterproofed. This was the Mamba Max Pro out of the uh, hit and run build. So it survived that uh, St. Louis G6. I just pulled it apart today and that it's December now. The G6 was in July and the mud and things in there were still sitting in there. I cleaned it out finally, powered it up, everything lit right up. So just uh, a quick dunk in some Corrosion X was all that took. I did a video on that. So if you look back, you can uh, find my hit and run build and find the waterproofing of the electronics I did. You can also check in the Poison Spider build when I did uh, the electronics there. I also did a waterproofing video. Same. Anyway, that's all I got for this thing, guys. It's, uh, it's coming along well. I'm hoping to uh, finish up this electronics install and then start upgrading the drivetrain uh, transmission, things like that. I know I've got some stuff coming from supershafty.com, uh, Vanquish, a bunch of good stuff coming. This truck will be a lot of fun here as soon as I uh, really start you know, railing on some of these parts and getting some of these things in there to, to upgrade this thing and make it look and perform even better.